As part of a new segment, because we love staying refreshed, I'm going to introduce a new drink of the week where I'm making a cocktail that I've designed based on classic literature, and the boys are going to have a nice big sip. This week, to start us off, we've got a cocktail that I designed, which is called Flowers for Algernon, based on the book of the same name, and it's made with 100% botanical flower-based ingredients. Hope you enjoy. All right, Welcome back to another Let's Play video. (laughs) (laughs) Smash that like button. Welcome to Water Boys. Welcome to Water Boys. Water Boys. Oh, Today we're going to be discussing history's biggest crooks. Ooh, ding, ding, ding. Ring my bell. And then it would start. Yeah. If we're going to talk about crooks, I think we can't do that without addressing the elephant in the room. Fine. Tricky Dick, Richard Nixon. Uh... A man who claimed himself that he was not a crook. Uh, You know all about Nixon, don't you? No. Right. But you know who he is. Yeah. So in 1972, there was a thing called the Watergate scandal. Mm -hmm. Um, Yep. So basically, there was a a break-in. Five men were caught breaking into the Watergate complex. It was the um, complex for the. It was the DNC. It was the Democratic. uh, The Democratic. Was that party officers? Maybe. Yeah. Something to that effect. So yeah. he, was he a naughty boy? It basically, he had. Um, it basically, they found these people, and it brought to light a, a long history that Nixon had been like taping uh, political opponents in their offices, like bugging them, and like there was harassment things, and it brought to light all this scandal that that Nixon had been dirty up to his dirty tricks. Um, so, and he notoriously said, "I am not a crook." Yeah, he? he notoriously said, and he also notoriously said. If the president does it, it's not it's illegal. illegal. But you're right. saying he's a crook. Well, yeah, we believe he's he. Not. I believe he is, and I think you yeah. agree. So he's yeah, that's right. In the in also the, a liar. In the Frost uh, Nixon, Frost debate, Nixon debate, Frost said something like, "Are you saying then that um, just because you're the president, you're entitled to do something that's illegal?" And he said, "I'm saying that if you, if the president does it, it's not illegal or something," which was obviously quite corrupt. Mm, yeah. So what do you what do you say? Oh, someone he also who... um didn't he fire the uh the attorney general or someone the the guy that was um that was trying to prosecute him that was trying to build the case against him. I think possibly he, he did. did. There was a lot of foul play. Yeah. But as somebody who's not who wasn't so familiar with the scandal, where do you where do you stand? So you're saying because he's president, he can do what he wants. Yeah. That's what he said. Everyone, everyone would turn a blind history eye. History repeats itself, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Funny that. So maybe one in years to come, we'll say the same about yeah. someone else. Certain individuals. Pretty okay. crooked. Cool. Right. <laughs> Jeffrey Allen Manchester. Okay. This is one I just found on the internet. I didn't actually know about him before this. Right, okay. And actually, I'm probably taking the piss a bit. He's the Toys R Us bandit. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, es- Jeffrey escaped from prison and hid out in Toys R Us for several months, all while posing as a faithful member of the local church. He even got a girlfriend from the congregation and handed out toys to children from Toys R Us. All oh, right, <laughs> that he'd stolen. Yep. Yep. Um, well, it's from <laughs> and after planning another robbery, local police were alerted. Um, his girlfriend ended up turning him in. Wow. That's um. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Toys R Us, though. Toys R Us. If you're going to pick somewhere... It's not the best toys location, that, right? No, Where would not, you pick? Where would you go? It pick? wouldn't be Toys R Us. If, if I were doing I a wouldn't, big heist. I yeah. wouldn't spend money... I get maybe that makes sense why you'd rob Toys R Us, because probably wouldn't go in there for actually spending yeah. money. No one would think about it, really, would they? So. And I suppose there are some really expensive toys, right? Some yeah. toys are really, really expensive. Do you ever remember that, um, oh, that um, robot sort of dinosaur thing that used to... Uh, like vaguely. A, yeah, kind that, of, yeah. That was quite expensive, I think. Do you, you know, you, you have robot dogs those. as well. Those, yeah. uh, like, white robot dogs. I remember those. Yeah, those Which actually expensive. kind of remind me of the Rick and Morty um, <laughs> <laughs> dog that we mentioned yeah. in the last one. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Um, okay, fair as uh, if if you're watching the the video, you'll see that Lewis is in, in, and Kai mm. are both enjoying a nice uh, imb, 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 imb. It's very weird. It's, it's I an like amazing it. Good word. 
I've not had a cocktail like this, this is before. No, exactly. Saw in the intro, this is my uh, flowers for Algernon cocktail. I'm thinking maybe of uh, of making a cocktail recipe book. So keep yeah, your eyes you out should do that. it. But okay, so yeah, Jeffrey Allen Manchester. Yep. Toys R Us crook. Interesting. I just fella. found him on the internet. I, what? Obviously, no, no one really. Knows. Let's let's talk about this now then, rather than later. Yep. I would say he is a criminal. Yeah, no, he is. But Rather, so, what what would you say is your definition of a crook as opposed to a criminal? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Because crook is, is, I suppose it's a more colloquial. I think I was taking thing. a piss a lot with him, to be honest. It's not illegal. Procu- if it wasn't Toys R Us, I don't think he'd be on my list. But I think he's still a good. He's a good way to first to segue into the question of yeah, what, no, what truly is yeah. a crook. Because maybe he is one. I, I when when you initially said it, mm-hmm. I thought. Yeah, he's quite well. But, uh, I think it's probably the fact that he, um, if you're posing as a faithful member of a local church, that's the part okay. which is probably that's the crooked quite, bit. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's to be a crook. There has to be quite a big element of lying. Like, Act, acting yeah. like you belong. Deception, exactly. It's acting like you belong. So, so it, yeah, yeah. But not, that's one of the elements yeah. I think. And I don't think it necessarily has to involve breaking the law. I think it maybe can just be some manipulation. Who, yeah, you who can, goes you can beyond, within the law. Beyond still. the boundaries that have been that they're supposed to be following, whether that is legal or just moral or whatever. Okay, and they go this. I think a crook is more you're correct that I think I think a crook is more of an ethical, yeah. moral sort of um fiend rather than a yeah. legal fiend. Because yeah. it's just short it's short for crooked, isn't it? It's yeah. Like, um, it's a contraction of the word crooked, so I mean... I mean you could be illegal not and the... still be a crook, but I don't think it's something that is necessary to be a crook. You're a... You're not the preferred um, shape. Right. Uh, His name is Bra- Brabeck Let's... Let me. Let's Brabeck play. Let me. He's the guy from Nestle who said that water is not a human right. Christ. What? Okay. Yeah. He was like an he's, he's like an ex CEO. He's on the board it's of directors or something. Yeah, and we ate him. He um yeah, he, yeah that he's kind of our enemy. <laughs> he he retracted a statement, but it was only because of the awful media backlash, backlash. that he Water got. Water is saying. not a human right. Yeah, and I don't know. I think that that statement alone, and the fact that That's somehow ridiculous. in his head he had come to that conclusion, hmm. I think you can't the element that made him quite crooked. You can't say. That something that keeps you alive is not a human right. That is yeah. like saying air is not a human right. Yeah, air exactly. It's not a human right. Shelter, you know, it's. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite. It's preposterous. Mm. Yeah. I know it's not really on topic, but fun fact um, <laughs> the phrase, um, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, yeah. was made by Mr. Kellogg. In like the nineteen fifties or something. It's an advertising slogan. Yeah. Wow. That's and it's actually not it, the most it? important meal of the day because of like your insulin levels are up yeah. in the morning and you actually don't need breakfast. It's actually da- I think it's dangerous to have breakfast. Because that I might think be a it, bit bold uh, to say. No, but Lewis um, take Lewis's no. statement with a pistol. <laughs> you, you know back, I think back it's when for we the were heart. In, uh, year eight, people used to call him the bold man. No, but I think it's only if you're um someone who has um dangerous insulin levels that if you their breakfast I think it's only dangerous to them right <laughs> I don't think it's for everyone because lots of people do have breakfast Nestle own everything, everything don't they they're quite uh, they're a massive company yeah. the Disney of the uh, catering world Nesquik uh, that's yeah you'd kind of think based on the name mm-hmm. yeah what about Nespresso is that Nestle I think possibly it don't could be it could it. be because yeah. that's well expensive Nestle own shares an hour company don't they yeah they own water boys we're a yeah. subsidiary of nestle no, yeah not. um nespresso machines are so expensive like yeah 200 pounds at least but it's a decent coffee machine you pay for what you get you're playing for you're True. playing you're paying for the brand like well, we said in the a whole, um, um wait is nescafe nestle as well is anything again, that starts with nest yeah <laughs> that's what i'm thinking Loch ness you know, <laughs> they own that but i have the dolce gusto and that's like that was like, like Thirty pound or something. But is it really? I think oh, I don't know. I think it's probably more than it was that. in curries, but it was it wasn't You got like a it, was, of it was nothing like an espresso machine. I thought it was at least a hundred. Did you buy a counterfeit? 
don't know. It was like an actual guy from the company in curries. Uh, Dolce it was just Gumbo. a stand, like giving people samples and giving people free coffee. You sure he wasn't like the uh, the heist man? <laughs> no, I feel like it might have been fifty pounds or something, but cool. But um, yeah, cool beans. I do like coffee. Coffee. Beans. Yeah. <laughs> what about yeah. you? Right. So this is a guy. He uh, there's a film made about him. He was played by uh, oh help me. What's his name? He was in. I oh, He was played. You can cut this out. Massively famous. Please help me. I'm not going to say anything until I know the actor. Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz. He was oh, in right. Django and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, Christoph Waltz played this guy in a film alongside Amy Adams. Um, his name's Walter Keane. Uh, he was around in the 1960s, and basically he um, he married a woman called Margaret, who was an artist. Mm-hmm. And basically, what he oh, did. Oh, classic love story. Classic love story. I uh, watched this. Yeah, did you? He's, he's the perfect. film's called Big Eyes. It's one he's of my favourites. It's awesome. And basically what he did was um, he made himself responsible for trying to sell her art. Uh, but obviously they were married, so they were both called Keen, and the paintings were oh, signed Keen. so nice. So he took the credit for the paintings. Oh. And it got so bad that he was like almost forcing her to paint new paintings, and he was getting the money, getting the credit for it. Um, eventually, they ended so up... Crazy, yeah, yeah. They ended up having to go to, to court over it because he was adamant that they were his artworks and she was just crazy and insane. Well, can they just say, paint something? But that's what happened. In the court, in oh, the court trial, the, the judge Love said, this. you have one hour, both of you, to, to paint a picture That's for amazing. He was like, oh, I've got a really bad shoulder pain, I can't do it. But she, in f- like 52 minutes, did like a perfect one and she was awarded yeah, like you can't have any excuse. of dollars. Mm. He can't have any no, excuse because sure. she's just going to be like, yeah, I'll do it. It was such a rewarding ending. Yeah. Oh. Watch the film. It's, oh, it's I an awesome see that. What's film. It called? Big Eyes. Big Eyes. It's okay. awesome. Um, but yeah, he. I think he's he's a massive crook. Like that's yeah. that's. I love those kind of films that make like yeah. justice. Because like, you I love think American... for, for the longest time you think he's gonna he's gonna win out and she's just gonna cave and it's like yeah. really harrowing. I love American sports films because they just make you feel like... yeah they pump you up. In the film, like he has his own paintings and then she scratches off the name that he's signed it with and it's actually someone else's that he's plagiarised as well. So oh, whether he actually did damn. have any oh. original art at yeah. all, um, I'm not sure. But yeah. he, certainly I think he was trained in art or wanted to train in art or something like that. But yeah, massive crook. And that goes with the deception thing. He yeah. didn't... Well, he did break the law. It's a shame Hitler didn't make it in the art world, isn't it? Yeah, as opposed to what he ended up doing. Yeah. There's a very big possibility he would just be a painter and still kill a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was he was but just a yeah. massive racist. But this is an interest, interesting... Do you ever find out who Banksy is? I don't think so, no. I thought we did. Because I feel like... But I, I, a picture of yeah, but I wasn't sure if, like, that's just the papers wanting yeah. to have a story. Yeah, yeah. that boy. It's interesting. This story. is my favourite, because... Because he's actually, um, yeah, well, I, I can't. I'm not even sure I can call him a crook. That he's he's very clever. You're Frank, not. You're not very good at this whole biggest crook thing. Frank, are you? Yeah, you're I'm sorry. Guys. Well, Kai's pet hates weren't that pet <laughs> hates. Well, they were. That's true. Um, Frank Abagnale Jr. Catch me if you can. The film Catch Me If You oh, yeah, Can. Yeah, he's a real guy, isn't he? Mm-hmm. That guy's like the ultimate crook. He is so. He's just so he's clever. He's the um the fraudster who. Forge checks across America and just sent them on a goose chase. Into someone else's skin. And it was played by Leonardo DiCaprio, and the other guy was played by Tom Hanks. He was. And his father was played by um, Christopher Walken. Hey. Uh, have you have you heard any of the songs from the musical? Yeah, it was um, played by Aaron Tveit, who was on your own, Les Mis. As well. And uh, Danny in. Grease live and on he, NBC, and he was also the um, one of the he had like Ooh. it was it was like a walk on part in um, <laughs> in um, Ghost Town. So we're, <laughs> we're agreeing that Aaron Tavi is uh, history's biggest <laughs> crook. Thanks for watching, guys. From our family to yours, they caught him more than once. Um, he's just so smart, what a slippery man. Slippery, changing. But um, he was caught, and then he was in prison. And then, Kai, you're right. Yeah. Cool. Boring you? <laughs> I'm just looking. Sorry, at man. My crook list. <laughs> um, and then the FBI gave him an offer to work for them to help stop other people because he's so clever. He knows the ins and outs of fraud. 
And then he still has a very successful um, fraud company today. Of helping. I didn't know that. Yeah. He um, actually, de- I'm pretty sure he designed the new checks for the banks. Oh. And, and designed that kind of system, I think. Clever guy. Because he's the night guy, knows all about how to get around it. So he can do the opposite and help stop it. People yeah. like him. And if you take nothing from this podcast, go and watch Catch Me If You Can. Ah, uh, you probably will take nothing from this podcast. You're not even up to this point. <laughs> You're not watch Big Eyes as well. Great film. Yeah. I'd think I'd like it more if they just get to the prank call. What, you'd like it more if they didn't watch the end? We might as well just <laughs> do a prank call channel. Smash that dislike, guys. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Please, Please don't. Yeah. Our food is on the line. We'll <laughs> get likes. We have to eat those likes. <laughs> you know, I'm going to pick a classic. I'm going to pick Charles Ponzi. The creator mm. of the Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme, right. He's um, a nice classic quirk, you know. The Talk guy. us through it. Um, so for those that don't know, the Ponzi scheme <laughs> is um, basically it, more or less the idea that if somebody gives you or your business money, you will somehow double it or you will increase it through the means of perhaps through investing it in certain ways or through some form of possibly gambling in some way. But the idea is that there's a more or less guarantee. You want to pick that up? Sorry, can I drop my phone on the floor? That's okay. These things happen, isn't it? More or less, you would there'd be a guarantee that you would get a return on your investment. And that Charles Ponzi basically came up with the idea. So as as a bit of a bit of a role play, I'll play the crook. Okay. You can play the uh, oh, sure. the innocent victim. Innocent victim. I'll do that. Um, and I'll watch. Hello. Hello. I'm not a crook. I'm an innocent victim. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just a normal guy. Uh, so you got some money there, where well, you got like ten pounds there. You 15. gave that to fifteen. Yeah. I'm a big boy. If you were, uh, you gave me fifteen pounds. Mm-hmm. Over the next, let's say, twelve days, like I could double that for you through my investment techniques. Secret investment techniques. Why are they secret? Can't you tell me. No, no, because I don't so, want you to do it to other people. Then I'm not sure I can park my £15. Oh, you will, because you love money, <laughs> and I've got money. Broken You've got money, So I'm happy. Ha- Hold on. You've got money, so I'm, I'm having your money. Well, just give me money. I make a little bit. That's part of the pause. That's part of the Ponzi scheme as well. <laughs> as the, the, the guy who will come up to you doing the Ponzi will also say that he'll make an invest. He'll make some money on it as well. So maybe like the guy doing the Ponzi scheme will say, I'll make 20%, and the other guy makes like 80%. Of course, nobody actually makes money apart from the guy who's doing the scheme. The house always wins. Yeah, and you always lose. <laughs> no, I play. Stay oh, you know okay. Freeze. Oh. You're in a bakery and the flour has exploded <laughs> everywhere. Go. Oh no. We should probably leave the bakery right now. <laughs> and then we can continue our deal. This down is the not good for my yeast infection. Oh, I've got athlete's foot. <laughs> We're two guys Stop with going. infections. <laughs> it's nothing to do with the bakery. Yeah. Oh, this, is, this is a good game. <laughs> Alright, I've got your money. Look at that. And then, Ponzi, 12 days okay. later, right. 12 days later, I actually give you your extra money. And then you say, I want some more money. Okay. So I yoink that back. Right like and I do it again. And I do that again for like, maybe like, I don't know, three or four times. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, I just say, you give me like a hundred quid or something, I just say, it didn't work out, dude. Oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. So, so I just made a ton of cash from you. Yeah. You started to trust me. Really you should drink though, it's, it's upsetting me. No, I've, I've been I drinking, it's really good. keep thinking you don't like it. No, 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 it's just Kai's an Why absolute gun. Why don't you look gun. dead into the camera? Kai's an absolute gun. And <laughs> describe <laughs> the taste and your opinion of it. So, the hole we're on. What's, what's the best way to hold? Like pinky underneath, that's what I normally do. Just so they can see a bit more of it. Glug, glug, <laughs> glug. I can only really describe it when I compare it to other cocktails and just say that this one is slight, is, is a lot more unique, quite flagrant as well. It's got like a, mm-hmm. like a 
like a perfumey sort of vibe to it. Yeah, because it's well, it's as I said, it's one hundred percent flowery. Oh yeah, yeah. Brilliant. so yeah. perfume is yeah. I think it's really good for a um, summer's day as well. This is a really nice day to have a cocktail. Would you ever consider um, wearing yeah. women women's yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> wearing like yeah. women's perfume? Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, it depends on the occasion, I guess. Because I feel like it's the same with women uh, with girly drinks. Which yeah. tastes so much better. It's I like hate beer. I hate beer. I think like beer's disgusting. Beer, 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 yeah. Girly right, drinks. This isn't really a girly girly drink. drinks are so much better. Because you know, like the whole. I girly... think it's a girly drink. I think it is a girly. And I think. I don't know. I think. I whole, think girly like, drinks girly are better. Drinks. We're, we're, by the way, for those of you listening to the podcast, bear in mind this is all being said with inverted commas. Obviously, the the idea of a girly oh, yeah, drink yeah. and a manly drink is yeah. quite outdated. What I'm it's, what I'm saying is what people can. Archaic. The yeah. idea of girly and manly drinks that I think that any drink which is made kind of in the twenty first century, you can't really attribute as being girly or boily. So <laughs> um, <laughs> a message been no in one kettle. no one's yeah. describing anything as boily. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I wouldn't call this a girly drink, really. Cause it's not. Well, no, my argument was that girly drinks. Well, what's called a girly drink is better. I hate beer. Beer's disgusting. Beer's quite not good. I oh well, I don't drink anymore. But... <laughs> oh, you and your words. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really been a massive fan of beers, but things like well, I really like WKD. I've never had WKD. And it's quite it's almost but, shunned for but me to drink. I should it. always, yes. I always think that I should try it. I tried it's, it before. It's colourful. It's pretty wicked. Ah, uh, I get it because that's what it's called. Hey. Oh. I didn't get that until you... Yeah, thanks. Anyway, uh, is it your... your yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a crook. Give me a crook. Um, I need to just check the guy's name. Okay, right. this is a guy... This is one of the most recently... I wonder if any of us have the same person. I don't think we do. Because I don't think we do. The most... Uh, one, one of the most you. recent and biggest crooks in business I, I've history. Got, I've got him. What, Bernard Madoff. I've got not him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Bernard Bernard Madoff maybe is perhaps how you pronounce it uh, it's been called the biggest corporate con in history so you know almost considers if you're a corporate con man does mm-hmm. that make you a crook is this Enron uh, it's not Enron no um, but essentially this ties in really nicely because what he did was a massive Ponzi scheme Ooh. so he um, he got loads of rich investors and companies to invest in his idea and his business and he would pay them off with investments from other investors. So it was this ongoing right. circle. That, that's a part of Ponzi yeah. schemes. I didn't. I missed out on that. So I'm glad you brought that up. The idea that it's paid through yeah, exactly. by other people's investments. So somebody invests. They they get their money back from somebody else who invests, etc. And it keeps building like that. And eventually, uh, the fraud was estimated at sixty-four point eight billion dollars. That's with a big B. Guys. That's with a big. B, and that's an American billion as well. Yeah. I think you might have to give it a big I afterwards as well. The big I don't B think one I. Yeah. And underline the O because that's important. Mm. Um, Two dots over the O gives a different. Italics on the end. <laughs> Exclamation mark in the middle of the word. <laughs> in the middle. In the middle. Wow. Yeah. Instead of the I. <laughs> it's, it's an upside down exclamation mark. <laughs> um, but no, so yeah. Corporate con, crook. Would you say they they marry up? Would you say I, I'd system? consider him crooked. Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd call him a crook. I think he's... you should be pretty loose on what you would call a crook. I think he's a criminal. If you if you've dis- deceived people, I think you could be called. I kind of feel like I'm glad I'm glad I go to the toilet. I've lost video. <laughs> oh. Okay, I think oh. I'm going to go for Edward Teach. Blackbeard. Blackbeard. <laughs> <laughs> Your life. Cameras on. That's too coastal. Across it, like local blasphemy. Oh, come I swear on my God for you, or you might die. I'm not the best, oh man. Bring back the drop. Too much pussy? Just try. She got me much. Careful. It wanna. And then yours was, careful, she swear. It might drop local. Just try the best. Bring it, man. I'm too pussy. You, like me. <laughs> too much blasphemy on or across you got my back for you not much that's coastal 
Oh God, I want to try your life. They're really That's good, aren't awesome. They? That, that, that last it's... line is actually really deep. Oh God, oh, I want to try, wanna your, try life. your life. I really like that. You I can actually like that because they're from the same rap. It's... Yeah, and I might, I might steal that. The last line. Yeah. You oh, what? Like you, you stole a I wanna, line. I want to. Uh... Fucking border patrol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I stole, I stole a line from Border Patrol. It's like Australian yeah. Um, Border Patrol, yeah. Crooks? Who are they? Okay. Oh, it's my one, Ed? isn't it? Oh, they Edward know. Teach. Blackbeard? Blackbeard. <laughs> that wasn't rehearsed. <laughs> hey, surely pirates were like original crooks. No? Yeah, no. Oh, um, I agree with you. Or were they, or were they just thieves? Well, they were. They were pirates. Some, some would have but, been just thieves. And some would have been crooks and thieves. They killed people as well. Well, they killed, they stole, they raped. They, they raped, they pillaged. They got they the crooks. Raped. They're probably worse than crooks. They're just I think, well, savages. That's the thing, savage, well, that's the thing, because crook, I think, I almost see it as quite, not a tame term, but certainly not... Frank it's, it's Abagnale, not like... I don't really want with the rest of the people in this list, because I feel like Frank Abagnale did not... Because I've got, um, well, I don't want black... Uh, I don't want them to be in the same category as black No, I, no I don't know. But keep talking. It's quite a white collar crime. Yeah. Crooked yeah, behavior. I, yeah, maybe. But but there wasn't really white collar jobs good back show, when Blackbeard good show. was around. So White Collar's a really good show. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. You should watch it. It's on Netflix. Okay. It's pretty good. We're not yeah. sponsored, but we want to be So good. I have Anderson Prime to be honest. I have that too. <laughs> but yeah. You have both. I have Why don't both. you just torrent your shows? <laughs> <laughs> uh well, they like uh, um, I like have them primed. They order Amazon stuff like, quite a bit. Oh yeah, that's why I have Amazon. Primed they also well. like. I like my next day They delivery, also have guys. the music. Next day delivery. I did also um, next day delivery and it didn't come though. So yeah, once. Um, it's actually the last battle. Um, I'm not gonna say that Edward Teach had a load of battles because I don't think that's very true. Because uh, they like they did shoot like shoot cannons at ships and then. Um, they're really smirking at that. And then the the captain would have to like surrender it after they've like, killed most of their crew. Right, yeah, I've played Black Flag. I haven't. Um And then Right, so he had this he had this battle with this I don't know, if he was like a he was like the captain of like an HMS ship. Um and he was tasked with getting rid of Teach and his crew. Yeah. Because they were menaces. They were crooks. Savages. Animals, um, and they had this battle. <laughs> I think they, I think they did have guns, but they, I think they ran out of ammo or something. But they got into a sword fight, and this is real badass. But um, I hate the word badass, but I but used dance. it. Um, but Edward Teach broke his opponent's sword. Ooh. Imagine breaking a sword. How do you do it? Did you just? I don't it? know. I don't know. There's not that much. There is information on Edward Teach, but it's not all like there are parts that's unknown. His actual name, they still think we'll never know his actual name. A certain person that we all know who has very long legs and arms, two point five times longer. <laughs> once snorted a line off a sword. It, it was a prop sword, but he did it. Yeah, well, this wasn't a prop sword. These were probably shot. real swords, wasn't it? Yeah. Because they were real pirates. Yeah. Anyway, um, some say that um, Blackbeard's girlfriend, they say that her ghost still waits on the cliffs of Dover. 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 You're Dover. <laughs> waiting for him to come home. But he never will because he died at he's, sea. He's in Davy Jones. Locker. Yeah, because at the end of that battle, his, um, his throat was slashed. So it's, it's kind of hard to come back from that. Um, yeah, you're not really going to bounce back, are you? Nah, you know, well, even if you do, you're not going to bounce fully back. You're not going to be your old self, no, no, are you? I could grow back. What's going to grow back? The neck. <laughs> the neck. Brilliant. Crux Mark crux. Zuckerberg. Oh, oh, Christ. Okay, that is... Didn't think about this. Yeah. yeah Very Mark good. Mark Zuckerberg. Because of the whole recent thing. Yeah, because of the Cambridge Analytica. Well, also, yeah, and the original founding as well. If you oh, yeah, the, the Wickelfuss. How Wickelfuss much do you guys rivers. value your um, internet privacy? I know Kai 
really values it. I do. I do. Like, I really um, do. I have, a, I have a VPN and whatnot. Yeah, Kai with... It's um, all gone now, my internet privacy, because I just told you. Kai with, like, phones and stuff, you know, like, the whole, um... Like, you know when you, um, accept to, like, send crash reports and that kind of thing? Yeah. And so that app developers can have your log. Kai, you wouldn't do that, would you? I don't snitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's not snitching, it's actually helping them out. Yeah, well, someone else can send it. Right, well, I do. I do. But, so, Kai values it. I don't think I do. You don't value privacy? Some... I didn't... What, my Snapchat's an open account. Follow me on Snap... Oh, it's not following, is it? It's adding me on Snapchat. Yeah. Lewis Jackson 890. Lewis Jackson 890. I... The issue I have... Oh, as well. But, like, there are some things, like, they might... S- they could sell your address... Or your yeah no that's what that's the thing with Facebook isn't it because yeah, yeah. they um, yeah, exactly. sold it to people so that um, they wasn't it so that they give you like the right adverts that yeah. might interest you yeah. to companies and oh um, elections that was another thing wasn't it that was like your political thing. agenda yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't care about that um, well, but I don't think you're but I'm not as big as a political exactly like you don't care about that for yourself but I would imagine you care about that if other people care about it that you're close about yeah you wouldn't want that to happen to other people. You just don't particularly mind if it happens to you, I guess. Well, I, I wouldn't mind if, like, say I was... I don't think I'm any pati- polit- um, like, particular party. I guess that was part of what, what they were doing, though, right? Because it wasn't necessarily to convert people to different political sides. It was more so to polarise yeah. the, the landscape make people who perhaps non were centre left or centre right or floaters fur- yeah, yeah fur- or like push them further on the spectrum to the to the different ends so that they could create like conflict and uh, really cause people to choose a side I suppose yeah and then um, Mark um, Mark's Mark's I, I'm calling him Mark because we're on first, first name basis yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and he shared his stocks before that because he knew that was, about, that was about to kick off. There was insider trading that happened a few years back as well fake, with um, regarding Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. Um, I'll see if I can find an article on it, because it's not exactly about the Cambridge Analytica thing, it's just another reason why he's a crook. I mean, in general... I would say he is. In general, yeah. I hate Facebook. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's great for birthdays, although I've cared less and less about people's with, birthdays. I don't do that anymore. Yeah, I've cared less and less about that. But um, it's good. It's good for events. Oh, it's good for all. Uh, um, the messaging service, the message yeah. Facebook yeah. Messenger. Although, I kind of want to move to a new one after all of this revelation, Cambridge yeah. Analytica oh, wise. Yeah, like, well, I wouldn't mind going to something like a. I hear Telegram's quite good because I use that for business. I think stuff. I would I consider know, deleting my Facebook. I really don't use it for much apart from yeah, our group same. chats. And I don't stuff. know if I. And could. if I'm added to an event. But I have to say, Zuckerberg. Definitely, I, I would say he's a he crook. A, yeah, yeah, he's a crook. I think we're which on. is actually kind of a shame, seeing as he came from like he started it when he was a college student. Mm. Yeah, but he was a crook back then as well. It wasn't really for, well, for good intentions. That was the initial idea to to rape various females yeah. on their face and body. Yeah, but that, he's a college student. That you he, rape females on their face and body. No, I don't. Well, you're a college student, and I don't. No, I'm a college student. But James doesn't. He's a college student. Yeah, but it was America as well, and I feel like, like they, they have a kind of... In this room. No, but they have a... I think in America they have a kind of, like, college stereotype kind of thing where everyone kind of plays up to being but, a college student. But he yeah, did they have, they have fraternities and yeah, exactly. We don't have those But yet. he did a lot of the initial, like, the, the initial version of Facebook kind of alone. So it wasn't like he was falling into the stereotype to prove himself to people. That's more impressive in a way. He, just genuinely felt that that was important to him. I don't think I can make any business on my own. Plus the whole lawsuit thing as well. Even if the the intention behind Facebook weren't crooked, Mm -hmm. definitely what the the process he went through. Yeah, yeah. He has been called one of, I think, one of the hundred most influential people, either in the world or in the business world or in America. Like Forbes, kind of. Yeah, I think so. Like, Mm -hmm. massively influential in the business world. Um... This guy's a man named Ray Kroc. Have you ever heard the name? No. no. And this is a new segment I'm introducing called Was Croc a Crook? Um, <laughs> back in... And this is another fantastic film that I watched recently. Um, I'll tell you what it's called afterwards, but it's fantastic. 
and the, the lead actor is brilliant as he is in everything. But essentially, in the 1940s or 50s, I think it was 40s, um, this guy, Ray Kroc, was a salesman, a businessman, and usually run of the mill kind of guy. Uh, and he came across a burger stand uh, who called themselves McDonald's. It's a great film. Great film. It's called The Founder with Michael. Have you seen these Michael films that you're talking about? Check it out. It's awesome. Sounds good. He was a crook, wasn't he? He good was. Choice. So essentially, um, but was he though? That's the thing. So he came across uh, this restaurant with their speedy system, like the fastest restaurant he'd ever seen. It's fantastic. Yeah. And they were limited to this one burger stand in this one part of America, quite off the beaten track. I think they tried to franchise a bit, and it had all just gone tits up. So for the most part, it was just this one. And he was quite a shrewd businessman, so he he negotiated his way into becoming the. Hi, where are you going? Nothing. Should I wait? No, because I I know the story, and because when I come back, I'll still be able to join in the conversation. Okay, so fine. <sighs> Kai has disappeared. Unbelievable. But basically, he negotiated his way into becoming the head of franchising for the McDonald's brothers. Um, so. He, Her brothers? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. So I, I didn't actually know. Dick and Mac McDonald, I think. Oh, yeah. um, and so he would go around the country and it, because it was so revolutionary, so big, it was selling like hotcakes. Everyone was buying mm-hmm. it. But because of the original deal he'd struck to get into the position he was, his share was like 0.3% of the profit. So he was, he was barely earning Nothing enough yet. to live with this. And he was the one who was making it massive. So what he did was he started a separate company a real estate company and he bought the land under every McDonald's and he bought empty land and said to new franchisees if you want to build a McDonald's it has to be here That's so, so he was raking in tons of money so much money from this because he was in a real estate business now um, and eventually he kept building and building this empire so big and it's because of him that it's now global it's, it's as big as it is um, but he eventually he bought out the brothers like he was making changes that were out of his contract and so he paid to shut them up. And eventually, he would go on for the rest of his life to claim that he was the founder of McDonald's. Because wow. he brought it from one burger stand to this global thing. Fair enough. He called himself the founder. Is But he did everything, everything was legal. Everything was above board and legal. Kai Snowback. Does that make him a crook? I'd say so. Because he's not a criminal. No, I don't think that, I don't think he's a crook. You don't think he's a crook? No. Why not? I don't think that's a... No. I don't think that's crookish behaviour. In fact, if anything, I'm cheering him on. He was a very shrewd businessman, like I said. He he, he was very clever in what but he, he did. But he probably deserved it, because if he, if he got McDonald's to that um, wider... Well, I mean, I think he <laughs> deserves praise for oh, turning yeah, it right. into what it is more or less the blueprint for what it is now. Yeah. I don't but think I don't it's, believe it's, the term founder yeah, but should I don't, be attributed to him. No, but he should be in the list of names who got McDonald's to where it is. Oh, 100%. Yeah, but yeah. it's not the same as the art thing oh, where no. claiming the art as your own. No, that was different. But this was it, it was very manipulative. And if you watch the film, I'm not sure about the accuracy of the film, but it's definitely very... It shows his sort of how desperate he was for it and how far he would go to sort of it's for status once again yeah. it was for status yeah. um, um question um the nursery rhyme old mcdonald is that about the mcdonald's brothers i'm almost certain it's not cool i don't think that's it what... is because there's, there's nothing exactly mcdonald's related in the old rhymes, mcdonald yeah he had oh a that's is that spelled di- that's spelled differently isn't it yeah maybe mcdonald let me Google it. Oh, it's quite. D's. I mean, all nursery rhymes are really old, aren't they? So. What's the original Burger King? Which I, I absolutely hate, by the way, guys. I um, I think. I think so Burger King do really good burgers. Oh, and shut I, up, Liz, no, man. but I think they do do well, good you, burgers. You should, use your brain. Man. It has existed since at least 1917. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. so you don't think he's a crook? No, I don't think he's a crook. I I think um. Not not just basing it on the. I think it's the, very clever. The claiming the founder as well, founder, as well, but also the whole you know buying the land. 
Humility claiming royalty. claiming you're the founder, maybe that's a bit crookish. That was definitely a oh, dick move. Oh, how about the handshake agreement he has with the um to uh, I didn't mention that. Yeah. What was that again? It was was he, it to um give like ten percent of his earnings to the uh to the McDonald's brothers or something? I can't remember what the He he gave, he promised him something and he, he bought all the restaurants including the original one I think. Yeah. Well, um, where the McDonald did the McDonald's? And he said they weren't allowed to call themselves McDonald's anymore as well. Yeah. Did Even the McDonald's? The McDonald's did the McDonald's so, brothers get rich? No, no. They they, they got they they were probably wealthier than they were prior. Okay, fair but enough. They did not but gain the based on that. that they I would have. say he is a crook. Yeah. It's not like he said you guys if, get fifty percent of it. No, but if no. The, if they were if they got rich, then I'd probably say that he's not yeah. a crook. But no, the, the whole point is agreement he didn't honor as well. I think is he quite he made he made a deal where he said I'm not going to write a contract. We'll just agree this on a handshake, yeah. which is also kind of crooked. Okay. Because he didn't actually do it. He didn't do it. Watch the film. That Michael Keaton is fantastic. It's a very good film. Rock. Yeah. El Chapo. We're going to talk about El Chapo. I've heard of okay. him. Everyone knows El Chapo. I know the name. I've heard of him. He's a bit like seen. Pablo Escobar, I guess. So it's a cartel sort of thing. Isn't yeah. It? Right. <laughs> He got <laughs> his story makes me laugh so much. Um, I'm already smiling. <laughs> uh, for podcasters, Kai is smiling. Um, yeah, he's a drug guy. <laughs> um, he was put in prison, but he escaped in 2001 by bribing guards. And it's reported that around 78 people may be, have been involved in his escape. I would say they're the crooked ones. Imagine, He's just crafty. imagine, like, ha- like you have to be pretty good to get seventy-eight that's people influential, involved yeah. in an escape. If it, um, the, and that's what tells you a lot about prisons: the fact that it needs seventy-eight people. Mm. Um. Anyway, so he escaped in two thousand and one, and he was actually um, there was a goose chase for him until two thousand fourteen. Was he putting which Guantanamo or not? I don't think so. Um, Do they say that for so. terror, crimes of terror only? Possibly. So are they still talking about shutting that down? Not they, anymore, but they, they were know. during the Obama Oh, and no, I think they're shutting down um, Rhode Island in New York. You know, they've got an island in New York, which is Rhode just... Uh, <laughs> no, the whole of no- Rhode Island is a prison. Oh, I see. New York has like an island, because they have a little, diff- little no, different islands. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure New York has an island which is just a prison. I thought you were talking about Rhode Island State. Oh. In is it even New Rhode Island? Island? I don't know. Um, Rhode Island isn't a state, is it? It's a city. Yeah, so he was he escaped in 2001 and then he was on right. the run until 2014, which is a crazy amount of time, to evade police. But um, yeah. I guess if you got 78 people involved, he's very influential and he had a lot of people who helped him because he can't do that on his own. Um, yeah, so after receiving medication, this is when he was locked up again, um, Guzman, who, that's his actual name, um, okay. was last seen by security cameras at 8.52 near the shower area in his cell. The shower area was the only part of the cell that was not visible through the security camera. After the guards did not see him for 25 minutes on surveillance video, personnel went looking for him. When they reached his cell, Guzman was gone. It was discovered he had escaped through a tunnel leading from the shower area to a house construction site. And this was um, almost a mile away. So this is a mile long tunnel. Yeah, this is quite the tunnel. Um, It was 10 meters deep underground and he used a ladder to climb to the bottom um it was equipped with artificial light <laughs> um air ducts and high quality construction materials Christ. in addition <laughs> this just makes me laugh more and more a motorcycle was found in the tunnel <laughs> which authorities think was used to transport materials and possibly guzman himself oh my lord although guards discovered that this is the weird bit um Although guards discovered that Guzman had escaped at 9.22, a red alert, which locks down the prison and alerts a nearby military garrison, was only activated at midnight. Hmm. Which is weird. To, oh, like over two hours and a half yeah, after know. when they actually found that he was missing, that's when they do the lockdown. That's insane. 
<laughs> it's absolutely mental. Because <laughs> I remember that coming onto the news because it's on Instagram. I don't actually know what year that was that he escaped. Did he not say 2001? Uh, no, 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 because that was the first time he escaped. Oh. And then he was locked up again in 2014. Oh, I see, so recently. And so I think it was maybe 2015 or 2016 when oh, very recently. he escaped again. Well, hey. Yeah. So would you guys consider him a crook? Yeah. Uh, with that much influence. Um, if Yeah, well, if he used his influence to, to get 78... 78 people yeah, yeah you bribed the guards with money and stuff like that I would say the guards would be crooks yeah the, um, one yeah. of the guards unlocked his because yeah. in an elect in um, prison like maximum security the um, their cells are all electronic aren't they yeah so they like press the button open the doors and that's <laughs> yeah thanks for doing a door that was, impression that was the, <laughs> that was I, the cell door I don't know if I consider him a crook to be honest I mean to want to leave prison Want to leave any form of confined space feels very natural to me. I mean, obviously, oh, that was good. That uh, was I wouldn't say that actually. I wouldn't call him a crook for the prison break. It would depend on what his actual crimes were when yeah. he was not in prison. But I agree that the the people, the seventy eight people, that decided to help. Perhaps not all of them, because perhaps not all of them were clued up about him, mm. and what he did, or why he was there. But the ones that did know. I would consider them to be crooked. Particularly the guards that he bribed. That, that, yeah. That's, yeah that's well, would you great. say... Um, uh, who's the... Uh, Al Capone. Would you say Al Capone was a crook? Because he used a lot of influence. He did. Because he, um, everyone in Chicago, because that's where he was... Um, everyone he also had it, The actual... Did he? Yeah. Oh. That's sad. Um, anyway, all the, yeah. the the res the actual residents in Chicago actually loved him, oh. because he um gave a lot to charity. They kind of called him Robin Hood. I mean, I know his actual like gang name was like Scarface, wasn't it? Yeah. But um, the residents called him Robin Hood, because I mean, it, it wasn't he was a horrible person, but he, he used this kind of um public relations, right? And he was a master of that. I mean, I would consider him a crook for the. For the fact that he was still in business and acting during through a yeah. prohibition, and the fact that he was providing, I think if you, I, I think if you're not, I don't know if the actual murders and executions that he did would give him the status of crook more so than the status think, of criminal. No, but murder. I think if you're influencing people to to like cover up other things you do. I think you must oh, be a crook. I you think, ch- oh, go on, sir. Sorry, I was just going to say, I think the more we discuss it and the more I think about it, I'm thinking corruption plays into it quite yeah. a bit. If you're a crook, maybe that means that you're you're corrupt. Because mm-hmm. that, that applies to Nixon, that applies to um, Walter Keane, the artist, that applies to... The any other, of um, I can't remember his name. Uh, Michael Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> croc, Ray Croc. Yeah, so many of them... It's corruption, and I think the same applies to Al Capone. Using mm-hmm. influence and power, or sorry, misusing influence and yeah. power in a way that furthers... keep up a public appearance. Immoral. I would agree that those are mask. the parts that I would say make him crooked, yeah. Cry, do you have any more? I do, do have some more. Do you want to give us one more to finish off? Yeah. Pick a good one. How about Brutus? Oh, Christ, Brutus, okay. yes! That's, that's actually yeah, really we're going good. Back in time. Yeah. I've read that, so. Way back. And that's. So that's weird because I haven't actually made, read many Shakespeare plays. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, that. that well, and you grind. clue the, uh, the audience up about. Uh, oh, about yeah. Brutus and Caesar and Cassio. Uh, I won't actually do it justice because I haven't seen the. Uh, I haven't actually read the play, but I'll do my best. Good what play. was his he was, uh, name? He was the close associate and friend of Caesar. Oh, I don't know. The Roman leader, Caesar. Julius Caesar. Yeah, he's like be- Caesar his best friends of Cassio. Yeah, Michael Cassio. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, he basically orchestrated Caesar's death Hello. and demise. Who? Michael Cassio. Oh. So that he could... We're just having a side conversation. He used it? the name Cassio twice. Yeah. It was over tax purposes that's that's that he used um, the, tried like to... The name. That's ridiculous. Because Caesar was quite harsh on taxes for the wealthy. Balthazar, he used that. And Brutus Sometimes obviously was quite well with his family. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want that. He wanted to Choose uh, which conversation you listen to. <laughs> he, I think he saw, if I'm right, he saw Brutus as a son, didn't he? I think so. Yeah. And his, according to, in, in, in the play Julius Caesar, his final, his, Julius Caesar's 
dying words are et tu brute meaning yeah. et tu brutus but um, in that play then fall Caesar mm-hmm. wouldn't you call um, he dies what's his name <laughs> Caesar's friend the one who says the oh, okay. famous speech the whole um, friends uh, let me your ears that one that's is that not Caesar who says that? No, not Lemmy Um Friends Roman countrymen. Yeah. Who says that? Um, Mark Antony. Yeah. Um, when you say Mark Antony's a crook. I don't know enough about him, fortunately. I don't think Cause so. Mark An- yeah, but Mark Antony like used Caesar's death to, to gain influence. Right, yeah, to like oh. um, feed off of the um, public's reaction from Caesar's death and be like, he was my friend. Oh no! Um, but uh, don't worry, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this right. Thinking about it that way, then maybe, maybe because yeah. he played on the pub on public perception and public mm-hmm. response and emotion, and used that to his advantage. I suppose that is correct. Playing on human emotion, maybe that's what the crooked, crooked behaviour. Again, is. I think that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's immoral, as we said earlier, at mm. the top of the episode. But yeah, Brutus. That's a really interesting. Mm. Yeah, it's quite a one. And yeah, that's right. And his betrayal was. I think my Blackbeard was better. <laughs> Blackbeard was maybe not necessarily a, a real uh, character. Well, Although actually, Brutus maybe necessarily wasn't. Blackbeard's real. real. The Brutus that we know of from from the play, perhaps certainly Shakespeare's exaggerated. But um, does no one else have any of the crooks? I've not. Then I'm gonna then I'm gonna list two more crooks, but I'm just gonna give. Do them, them like rapid a, fire. Yeah, I'm gonna rapid fire them. Dr. Peter Chamberlain, who I mentioned in the previous podcast, he um he was the creator of the forceps. Oh yes. And he kept it. Him and his family kept it. A oh secret. yeah, yeah. Oh, I've changed the battery. Hey. How'd you do that? Oh, it's a bit of a magic trick, isn't it? Turn it off. But um, yeah, he he basically just kept the idea of the forceps, which you know for. But, How'd uh, you do that? <laughs> um, he kept it a secret with his family for years. So I'm just gonna list him off. And also, right, my yeah. oh god. No, I wasn't going to uh, say I just moved no, my no, mouth no, no I didn't one's, say anything. No one's going on. And my, my you wild can go card, on. my wild card, which I'm kind of Was well, Brutus not the wild card? Yeah, no, no, surely. He's a safe card. Um, <laughs> That's a sure the thing. The Beast from The Chase. From The Chase! Oh my god, <laughs> you know, that is a wild card. He's actually married to his cousin, and I think... Is that right? Yeah. Does that, that doesn't make him a crook. I don't know, I feel like there's something quite crooked about incest. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have to disagree. If we're using the definition of crook that we've used throughout this entire episode, yeah, uh, that doesn't really fit with what we've went with. Yeah, but he's more of a wild card crook, isn't he? He's a wild card. He's a wild in card the fact that it's that he's having irrelevant. sex with his cousin yeah. <laughs> and married her. Mm. It's a wild card in the fact that it's not as good as the others. <laughs> it's a bit. It's, it's a bit grimy. You should have left him on a high. It's, it's a wild card that didn't no, work out. I had to mention him. No, I had to mention the beast, the beast no. from the chase. Um, <laughs> Brutus should have been the closer. Uh, well, frankly, if uh, if why don't you leave a comment in either the cast box comments yeah, or the Facebook we, comments? Who have we missed out? Who have we missed out? Probably and loads of people. Do really. you think the Beast is a crook? Um, and who do you think of the ones we said is the biggest crook? Let's decide amongst ourselves who we think is history's biggest crook. Um, but also, if you're listening or watching, please leave a comment. If you leave a comment, we will be so happy. As always, stay hydrated. It's the end of the episode. We're getting close, but it's not just—it's not right now. We've, well, got, we've got to decide the crook. Oh yeah, but do no, stay hydrated. Okay, Give me some water. No. I've not had any water this time. Oh, James, his water so much. It's so refreshing. Yes. As a noun, crook is usually defined as someone who has committed a crime or has been legally convicted of a crime, or alternatively, a circular segment of a curve. As so- a verb. Crook can mean bend or cause Someone, to bend. It just means so they're the circular segment of the curve, yeah. She's just saying... I, I disagree with I that disagree with though. That's, she said crime, like criminals. She said someone who's been convicted of a crime. So any criminal is a crook. Cut, cut out all of no, that. No, no, no. I, I, cut out anything that I Alexa think, just said. Alexa, to be honest, to be, Alexa, I get it. Play Boss by Lil Pump. I get it, to be honest. Here's a sample of Boss. Because when you hear when you hear people from the old days I'm saying like crook, like boss. Yeah. it's not a light-hearted. I am not a crook. It's not a light, light-hearted way. Yeah, came in with soft. Right, that's enough for this, isn't it? We're done. We're done, boys. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Water Boys. Now wait until this is over.
Thanks so much for watching this episode of Water Boys. We've been the Water Boys. As always, stay hydrated. Kai, what would you like to say? Oh, I love some water. I hope you love water as well, guys. Because I do. Take care. Straight. Can I speak to the manager? I have um, I have a query I'd like to get. Hello, can I help you? Uh, hi, yeah. I'm doing a, I'm I'm doing an article for my university regarding um, history's biggest crooks, and I'd like to um I'd like to ask you a question about the creator of Wimpy, Mr. Wimpy himself, who is in fact considered a crook within many circles, especially political circles. And I'd like to see. Um, I'd like your opinion. Do you think that Mr. Wimpy is a crook, in your opinion? Who is Mr. Wimpy anyway? Um, he's the creator. He's the creator of of the. So who is he? He's not just not a person, is he? No, he's a real. I mean, you, you need the information from the head office. This is one of the branches. Well, I'm I'm also looking for an opinion from um from from line managers about Mr. Wimpy. Like, oh. if, actually, actually, what is your opinion about crooks? Um, is there somebody that you think is quite crooked that you'd like me to do do a little bit of a, a piece on? No, no, no. I mean, have a, have a, do something else here. Haven't you got something else to do? Well, you work, quite, you work, quite. You're working off of, you're asking me stupid questions here. Bye-bye. Well, this is important to me. Hello?